a gamer, have you ever found a peripheral that you liked so much that you wish you could keep it forever? And if it ever broke on you that you would go out and find the exact same one to replace it with? Now I thought I had with my Rocket gaming keyboard, I'm stubborn like that, I didn't want to use anything else. But then MSI got in touch and asked if we wanted to try out the new MSI Vigor GK50 gaming keyboard and I said yeah, okay send one through, we'll give it a try. And the verdict, I'm so glad I did. The MSI Vigor GK50 gaming keyboard is what they call low profile, which essentially means it's small to a more traditional style keyboard. There's no real border around the outside keys. It is, however, a full-sized QWERTY keyboard with a number pad on the right-hand side. So the keys themselves use mechanical switches, which are actually called low-profile mechanical switches on the box. I'm not sure if you can see how close the keys are to the actual edge of the uh, keyboard here. Now, the proper name for them, though, is called the Kali Low Profile Switches, and I've not had much experience in the past with them, as I usually opt for Cherry MX Reds on my gaming keyboards, but after using them for about a week or so, and you know what? They are really not half bad. The switches need a little bit of force, uh, which bottoms out when pressing the keys, which I actually quite like. Being low profile switches, um, it means that the travel distance is minimal, sitting at around 34 millimeters. This along with the loud audible clickiness of the actual keystrokes gives me an indication that I'm actually hitting a key when I've got my headphones on and I'm in the thick of it in, in, in a, on a battlefield. Typing on the keyboard took a bit of getting used to and touch typing on this keyboard makes a bit of a racket due to the clickiness of the keys. Playing quick games like Heroes of the Storm was great and the return rate of the hotkeys was very decent too. I did find an issue with its flex though and yes, although on the box it says there is a metal bar right underneath the space bar just down here uh, that is supposed to provide increased support and whatnot. I mean, sure, the keyboard doesn't slide around on your desk and it can sit firm in place and it doesn't move while you're bashing your way through skills or actions in game but press that spacebar too hard or any of the center keys for that matter and you'll notice the frame flex. It's not huge, nor can I see it breaking unless you are really trying to force it to bend, but it does happen. Now I do blame the plastic build quality for this. The whole thing, as you can see, is fully RGB too, which of course it is, it's gamery. It's gonna be RGB because all gamery stuff's RGB now. Even the indicator lights when you have the num lock or caps lock turned on are included in the overall lighting aesthetic of the keyboard. Now, it's okay though, it does match my Corsair IQ stuff inside my tower quite nicely, and the MSI GK50 even reacts to some games that are compatible with their Dragon Center and Mystic Light features. When I first plugged in the keyboard though, the lighting just went absolutely manic. Uh, the RGB windmill effect was so fast and I had to turn it down straight away in the Dragon Center. The cord that plugs into the back of your PC is braided, which saves it from getting snagged on the back of your desk and actually fits in with the premium aesthetic quite nicely. So let's talk about the Dragon Center. It's essentially MSI's driver software, which all of their new peripherals feed into, like their GM30 gaming mouse and GH50 gaming headset that we're just about, or we've already reviewed actually, we've already reviewed them. Cards are up here. It's the brains behind the operation, essentially. Inside the Dragon Center, you've got the choice to save three different profiles with up to 30 programmable macros. Plenty for all types of gamer. Now, the only other options you've got to change in the software is the Mystic Light Effects. And inside there are a few presets to choose from, as well as your perky lighting, so you can really narrow down your gaming experience to the buttons you're actually going to use. I keep my lighting effect on Whirlpool, but there are a bunch of cool effects like Radar, Wave, Ripple, which fires out with each keystroke, and an effect that reacts to your music like an equalizer. I 
it's all very basic software compared to what you're usually greeted with from some of these gaming keyboard brands like Rockat, for example. Now, I liked the MSI Vigor GK50 gaming keyboard a lot, especially its size and lightweight design. Now, sure, it has a bit of flex to it, but it wasn't a problem during my gaming sessions. So thank you very much for checking out our video review of the MSI Vigor G50 gaming keyboard. If you enjoyed the video, then do hit that like button, subscribe to keep up with our latest tech and gaming videos. Also, let us know in the comments below what you think about this keyboard, whether you would go for something like this or whether you would stick to something like Rockat, like I, I stuck to Rockat for a very long time, or whether you've got a gaming keyboard or a peripheral that you are so used to using that you would never stray from that brand again. I'd like to hear from you as well, just to start a discussion, because I was like that with my Rock, Rockat stuff, but since trying this and using this, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm converted. I must say I'm converted. Anyway, leave a comment down below telling us what you think. Thank you very much for watching this video though, and we will see you in the next one.